Hello, and my name is Timon Smektawa, and I'm Dying Light Franchise Director, which means I'm responsible for the creative development direction of the Dying Light series. So, Timon, your series is really interesting because while the single-player games do have DLC, you guys supported the first game for a long yeah. time. Like, yeah. what went into? Yeah. The, is that what? Is that something that that you guys always knew you wanted to do in the first game, or is that something that expanded as the game started to get balanced updates and DLC? I think it's fair to say that it's expanded as we as we went along. Uh, at the beginning, when Dying Light One was released, we Actually, I think it's safe to say that we have plans to do a more traditional approach to custom support, maybe just two DLCs, maybe some additional smaller content, but but nothing big and especially nothing as prolonged as it ended up to be. Um, uh, but as the story goes, uh, when Dying Light 1 was released, it was actually... It, it, it was praised by media, but also media wasn't really that excited about the game. I think we were like an underdog developer with this new title, new game, and and and, and for media it was okay, but they moved on to bigger and shinier things. But at the same time, it was the community, the players that saw something special in Dying Light and started supporting us and 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 congratulating us for the for the work we did on the first game and um, also started kind of being ambassadors for the game recommending the game to their friends and it really helped our confidence as a developer and of course it was also it also uh, added a lot to the eventual success of the game so at some point we decided that we want to give back to the community and that we 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 will make an extra effort to make sure that our community sees that and uh, appreciates that and and that um, it, it was basically a, a, a matter of giving love back to the people who loved us most when uh, when we needed that um, and of course then it got a little bit more structured we announced a, a program that we have called 10 in 12 which meant that we have released 10 free DLCs for our community for our players over the span of 12 months it, be, it was a success. It uh, really resonated well, both in terms of comments and, and sentiment and uh, the number of players we had. So we continued that. And in the end, we have we have stayed with the first game for basically almost eight years. So quite a long. And of course, we want to repeat the same story. We would love to repeat the same story with Dying Light 2. So far, we have announced that we will support Dying Light 2 for five years. And we are sticking to that promise. Hopefully, I will be able to keep working on the game and expand expand the game even further. Now, now you did mention you mentioned that like you you had kind of learned a better process in the sequel with like kind of mainstreaming it in a sense. What was like the biggest mm -hmm. lesson you took away? You talked about a little bit about it when you were supporting Dying Light One for as long as you have that you really have got down and mainstreamed and kind of got down to a science in the sequel that you plan on doing for the next five years. Dying Light 1, as when we released it, it was, it was a new IP. It was a new game, new, new thing on the market, and no one really knew what will resonate with players, what, what kind of content, what kind of elements of the game they will uh, get most excited about and focus on. And with the post-launch content, we were able to test different ideas and verify different approaches to uh, to our content, to what we have in the game, the elements that make Dying Light. And I think it, it, it really helped us formulate our own belief and understanding of what Dying Light is as a series, as an IP. And this also helped us and allowed us to make some more informed decisions as we went to the Dying Light. Now, like, in so talk, you guys have all this cool content planned. Like, talk a little bit about, like, what players can expect to see in the future of Dying Light 2. We don't want to kind of over-promise or look too much into the future because game development is, is actually quite complex. And uh, I, I think I can say that that we did announce or, or reveal a couple of things, maybe a little prematurely. So we, we, I, I would like to not do that at this point. So, but what we are focusing right now is we are focusing on our updates that started with the anniversary updates at the, at the beginning of the year, where we look at the core mechanics of the game and focus really hard to expand on them and upgrade them, kind of making sure that our fortress the base is is is, is, is get bigger and and more grounded and more fortified as we move along kind of reemphasizing and and strengthening strengthening the pillars of what makes dying light so so far we have 
in April we have focused on our combat uh, with an update that added a lot of content and, and mechanics and features centered around combat, mostly related on gore and the damage model. We wanted to ramp that up. And with this update, the update that we have, uh, we are focusing on parkour and uh, night experience. And uh, when it comes to those two elements, I think it's very Again, it's, it, it's a funny story because I have basically just realized that the work on both of those tele elements shares the same story or format or formula. Uh, so so, so to, to explain that, both of those systems, the parkour system, our traversal system, how you move through the environment, uh, and the night experience are systems that have been heavily priced in the first game. Uh, but also they were marked and, and um, they were marked by a lot of players as systems that have quite high difficulty level that are actually quite complex, quite difficult to play. And we wanted to make both of those more accessible in the sequel. We did that and it was a success because, uh, for example, our parkour system was basically one of the high, highest rated, if not the highest rated element of, of, of the sequel. But then we have also realized, and we got that by the, by, the, by the conversation with our community, that by making those systems a little bit more accessible, we have also maybe lost some of the edge that was in it and some of that, some of that um, uh, kind of punkish and, and, and uh, rebellious spirit that made those elements in, uh, in Dying Head 1. So with the update that we that will be dropped in a few days, we want to kind of give something back to our more, most dedicated uh, community, to the hardcore players that we have. Um, uh, so on the parkour side, we are working on making um, parkour a little bit more challenging, but also a little bit more physical, a little bit more grounded, giving players a little bit more control. When it comes to night system, we are making the game even scarier than it was in the sequel, kind of getting back to the horror vibes of, of, of the first game more. Can you talk about how your studio interacts with your community and how that affects the updates and the the plan of supporting, like we'll talk about Dying Light 2 specifically, because I know you guys also have planned on doing uh, maps, like custom community maps for your, mm -hmm. for your community as well. Can you talk yeah. about that process and how you, talk, how you work with them to make every update like, you know, like you're listening and you're paying attention and you're listening to your community? Uh, well, it's, uh, it's uh, so first of all, it starts with us keeping uh, our ear to what the community is saying. We have a huge community team that goes through all of the possible online media, not only kind of reading to what people are saying, but also drawing them in discussions and, and asking about specifics and trying to really understand what's behind like a one line comment on YouTube. Like, why did you say, why, what, what, what did you mean exactly? Why did you say that? What exactly in the game is that you would like to see improved or, or, or what's the context for the cool new idea that we have noticed somewhere mentioned by, by one of our players on Reddit or Discord. Uh, so it's really active, it's really back and forth. It's not just us kind of analyzing what people are saying, but also motivating them to, and encouraging them to give feedback and to say us, tell us what they think. Um, uh, then when we go through when we go through all of this, we we kind of see we try to see what sticks, what gets most more, most traction, what's most frequently mentioned by by people. And uh, actually, we built at least part of our development process on delivering the features that, that that people want. When it comes to community maps, I think that's a great example. We know this already that there's there are a lot of creative people in that, in that community. Even by adding stuff like photo mode, we have realized that there's a huge number of people that would like to express them in dying light, doing something else than just smashing zombies on their on their heads. So, uh, um, and we also saw that with this uh, with the first game where we developed where we released um, uh, dev tools tools that allow players to make maps for Dying Guide 1 and it was also a success. So we wanted to do that for for the second game as well. Um, but we also knew that we need to kind of step up. We need to do we need to do it better and bigger this time around. So uh, we have partnered with a with a website in the service called Mod.io, uh, which is a, a great hoster, which is a great host website that hosts mod content, community maps for 
quite a few games, but I think we are one of the biggest, if not the biggest, on, on the platform. But what Mod.io um, delivers to us is this huge suite of, of uh, features that allow easy uploading of maps and easy filtering of maps and, and also some discovery aspects features which make it easier for players to actually see which maps are good, which maps, maps are worth playing. What we yeah. are doing with this update is that uh, we will allow players to play those maps right from the game. So, so far you had to download uh, an additional specific application, our dev tool editor, which gave you access to those maps. Right now, you just start the game, you just put up the game and you have access to all of those maps. So basically with this, we are giving all of our players extremely easy, extremely seamless, extremely conven convenient access to all of those uh, maps created by the community. One little caveat here is that with the next update, with the update that will happen on Thursday, this will be available only on PCs. We have the implementation on consoles. We are working on it, it is in progress, and this will be um, uh, a part of our next uh, update that will happen quite soon. The difference is this is something that we had to do because of the submission process at the uh, first part. So, 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 so this is PC for on Thursday and very soon on consoles as well. And what we do with the community creators, again, we are in direct contact with them. We also encourage them to and kind of try to steer or maybe inspire their creativity by uh, running various competitions for them. Uh, quite recently, we have released a set of assets from our first game. So we are having a competition which encourages the creators to use those assets to kind of take players back to Haran, the city from the first game. So, so, so it is a combination of providing players with uh, providing community, uh, community map makers, mod makers with powerful, easy to use tools. It's a combination of increasing the exposure of those creations by having them in game, and it's a combination of being in direct contact with the with the modders, with the community map creators, helping them, supporting them with their work, and also inspire, inspiring them to kind of take their creativity to, to to the places where we feel this can be most beneficial. You know, speaking of, it's funny because like the modding community was always on PC. It's only yeah. these last couple like years we've actually gotten it on console side. Like what yeah. goes into to supporting that? Like since you guys are on Xbox and PlayStation, what goes uh, it's, into it's, your mod support is on those systems as well as PC? Yeah, it's, it's a technical headache, let me tell you. It's, it's really like, like another layer of difficulties like some you were playing on hard and not playing on hardcore so 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 that's that um right now what we are doing is like so, and that's why we're taking it slow that's why why we are taking this step by step so right now what we're doing is we are focusing on delivering the content created by uh, by modders on consoles as well so that's mostly a technical challenge that that we that we have overcome we just as i said we just need to go to submission um because we feel that this will significantly impact the quality and the number of maps created like it's a difference if if, if modders will feel that whatever they do can be instantly seen and played and rated by players all over the world I'm sure this will motivate them to do even more, even better stuff. But of course, at some point, we are thinking about also enabling uh, console players to have a chance of, of, of have a go at being able to create the maps by themselves on consoles. But that's of course sometime in the future. So, uh, so maybe let's not go too far ahead of ourselves. For now, it's this update, and, and I'm really, really excited about this because this is like it's suddenly inside you're dying like two game you get this box full of chocolates sweet like sweets that you can have fun with play see what what's there and the creativity presented on some of those maps is really really amazing some like is of course a little bit obvious but we are we as developers of this zombie fantasy some zombie fiction game this in a way this like we want to stick to this we want to do like this we want to work in that genre but then you see at what the creators are making and they have no boundaries they have no limits 
like the, only their imagination is with the limit. So there, so you will see spaceships and 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 the west, um, uh, wild west uh, rail tracks, like all of all of all of different unexpected stuff that that probably we wouldn't ever make because we would be too kind of constrained by the by the genre that that the game is set in. Now you spoke about like you know your 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 new night mode and your parkour and your new parkour mode or like your parkour overhaul. Yep. One of the things about your parkour I think is interesting that I think a lot of people might dismiss if they don't know about game development is the ability to like scale down banners to slow you down. That's like a you guys could yep. jump on like a flag. Like can you take us into like how yep. much work actually goes into making something like that possible in your game? For those people who yeah. just think it's like a switch, right? Oh, you just plug it in and it's done. But like I'm sure there's more yeah. involved in that. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so the analogy, the, the analogy that I'm using when, when, when it comes to explain this is basically like imagine that you're filming a movie and there's a scene with an actor that drinks coffee. So basically, I know I'm simplifying this, but but what you need to get is to put the actor on a chair by the table, give him coffee, get a cameraman, get a director, some lighting artist, maybe an audio guy, and that's it to recreate. I know I'm simplifying this, like apologies to all my friends from, from the from TV and, and movie business. Um, but on the other hand, to do something like this in a video game, this is really like, it takes work of a few dozen people that have to kind of concept the scene, first design the scene, concept the scene, create 3D models for, for the mesh, for the table, for the chair, for the, for the coffee. There needs to be an animator that animates the character. There needs to be the same actor that is more capped to do the to do the movement. Um, there needs to be like way more lighting artists. There need to be QA testers that make sure that the scene actually works as it should. There needs to be AI programmer that would program the behavior of the of the character. So, so, so everything is complex in making video games. And, and the thing that you mentioned is is requires at least uh, like a gameplay programmer, animator, FX guy, sound guy. 3D modelers, concept artists, a group of people that work on just delivering this one specific uh, feature. For you personally, what's the single most exciting thing that you're looking forward to players getting their hands on with future updates for Dying Light 2 that you can talk about? The new update is focused on three big elements. It's the parkour improvement or, or upgrade, it's the, it's the night experience, new night experience, and the community maps. And to be honest, all of those elements get me really excited because uh, um, maybe it's also because I have been playing Dying Light 2 for like when you look at my Steam account, I have about 6,000 hours on, on, on Dying Light oh, wow. so I really know the game. <laughs> and with those, with this update, we are really significantly, it's really like a, for the night experience, it's a, a dramatic overhaul. For parkour experience, this is also very significant. It might be harder to explain when you just look at the videos, but when you start playing this, you really feel that there's more physics, more gravity. So, so it can really be felt. Community maps, on the other hand, this it's this trove of creativity that, as I said, way beyond what we could do at Techland. So, so all of those things are excite, uh, exciting. And then moving forward and looking into the future. Maybe I will not reveal much, but I will just say that we have some quite cool events, happenings planned for the game for the summer months. So I think the summer will be will be full of fun for our players. If someone's uh, if someone's new to Dying Light 2 and they want to give you feedback or they're interested in uh, making their own maps, like what's a good resource that you could point them to? Like do you, your forum, your Reddit, your social media? So, so definitely it's all of our social media channels, it's Twitter, it's Discord, it's Reddit, but uh, quite soon we'll also start, I, I, I can't reveal too much, I don't want to spoil the announcement for the team that, that's behind it, but quite soon we will also give players access to another very cool tool to express their feedback about the game and share ideas. Um, uh, we want to do something where we will directly ask players to share their feedback, give other players the ability to vote or down upvote or downvote those ideas, and we want to use that as a as a pool of inspiration and, and reference for our further work.